Dorothy, how did you start out in show business? Well, first of all, I started in a, in a, in a, in a, with a band, a local band here at the Denza place. They used to pay me five shillings for a, a, what we called a gig. You know, I was li- when I was lucky to get it, so I saved about four pound of that. But my father took it from me, but not for uh, for any reason other than he didn't want me to go into show business. You know, but he was my biggest fan. I might add when I you know became a name but um, in that very little house there that, I, that I've just come from my mother used to throw my dresses out of the window you know uh, for my father not to see them uh, this is how she used to get me out of the house I used to sneak out and then, then there was a little uh, a telephone box here but it's not here anymore where I used to change in there and go on to where I was going. My role is when you meet her when she's gone to Trebarnog where she ended uh, her days um, with Esme Coles and mine is her really reminiscing about her life and it was a heck of a life believe you me uh, she was quite a gal um, so you meet me with being rather ill actually because she didn't address the fact that she had bladder cancer and you've got to address these things and she would she just ignored it and that's so sad because of course infection sets in blah 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 and that can give you a delusions you know and she did have these delusions but then the other side of the stage you have a lovely young lady emulating her when she was younger and singing all her songs I just get to do the paranoia <laughs> people remember her as that huge star that you're talking Indeed. about. Indeed. How much did you know about her life before you started researching the project and how much of a, of a fan were your family, for instance? Do you remember her? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, because I am a certain age and I remember her very well, <laughs> um, as a lot of people do um, that are about 60 and over, I'd say. And... Um, she was an icon, you see, because although she was born, actually, during the First World War, she was born in 1915, she actually made it nationally and internationally it, at the end of the Second World War, when we needed glamour because it was so grey. We needed all this. Yes, and Ruth, when, well, yeah, and when you say, you know, she was an icon, I mean, this is a, a woman who married Roger Moore. <laughs> Indeed, uh, she did, she, but she's already a big name when she married Roger Moore. He was um, a knitwear model, <laughs> and um, you never think that now. you find no. out, yes. I know. <laughs> I, I could do a PhD on her, believe you me, <laughs> the things I've had to read about her. But anyway, he was a knitwear model, and he, she used to hold these lavish parties at her house in Bexley. And uh, he came there. And she fell immediately in love. She'd never been married. He'd never been married, but he was at least 12 years younger than her. And she had to go to America. And she took him to America. So he started his acting career in America. And she took um, all that on board and supported him, started him off, poured all her money into him. And then, of course, she marries him. They said it wouldn't last, but it didn't last. He went off with another young Italian lady. And she really hated all this. She, she was so upset because it was the love of her life. And that she talked about him until her it's dying day. just a truly fascinating tale, isn't yes. it? We haven't seen it yet, but now yeah. we are definitely going to make sure oh, you we must. see it. It's, it's a great piece written by two uh, Welsh uh, writers. Mike Povey and Johnny Tudor, and Johnny Tudor, incidentally, is the one that's really provided an awful lot of material because his father and he knew Dorothy very well. In fact, he used to actually stay at Dorothy, Dorothy's house in Bexley. So uh, it's, it's a very interesting piece to have that background. We're going to have to have you know? back in. There's too much <laughs> to talk about. <laughs> and we know you're taking uh, Dorothy's story on the road. That'll be uh, stopping yes. off in places all around Wales. It so will. We'll it be will. watching out for yes. you. Thank, thanks yes. ever thank so much for coming in. Thank, thank you. Pleasure. When you want to say don't worry, say it with love. She was the glamorous and gifted songstress of the 1950s and she was always very proud to go home to Llanelli in her trademark sunglasses and fur coat. 
Dorothy Squires was perhaps the most popular British singer of her day, but despite the stardom, she never once forgot her roots. First of all, I started in a, in a, in a, in a, with a band, a local band here, the Denzer Place. They used to pay me five shillings for a, a, what we called a gig. You know, I was like, when I was lucky to get it, so I saved about four pound of that. But my father took it from me, but not for uh, for any reason other than he didn't want me to go into show business. You know, but he was my biggest fan. I might add, when I, you know, became a name. But um, in that very little house there that I, that I've just come from, my mother used to throw my dresses out of the window. You know, uh, for my father not to see them. And now the house has her name firmly etched in a blue plaque on the front. She had some fond memories of being brought up here. It hasn't altered a bit, except of course they've got modern doors and modern wi window sills. You know, well, I mean window panes, uh, window frames. I'll get this right. And they've got bathrooms, whereas we didn't. You know. But she died in 1998 and had a big funeral. Halfway through, there was a round of applause for her, and I'd never heard that in the church before. And it was, uh, you know, they stood up and applauded and shouted and more, more, more. It was what they shouted when she took to the stage. Dorothy Squires was a Welsh icon who was remembered as the girl from Llanelli with a great voice. Hannah Thomas, ITV News.